Hello and welcome to A Closer Look with Mark and Mark. He is Mark Shine and I am Mark Miller and it has been a while since we've been behind this desk. It has been a long time. It's been very cold outside. I'm glad to be back here and thinking about warm gymnasiums. Well, we hope you had a very Merry Christmas and a great holiday season. And to start the show off today, we're going to review some of the holiday tournaments that occurred while we were gone. Mark, you go, got the first one. Yeah, we have the Bluffton McDonald's tournament, first of all. Opening night, Bluffton defeats Corey 42-34. Caleb Jefferson with 18. Dakota Bricker with 10. Then a shootout in the second game. Arlington defeated Miller City 81-75. Arlington had three players, Vermillion, Barry, and Price, come together for 61 points. Miller City had three guys come together for 58. That would be Noah Otto, Mark Kuhlman, and Gable. So big shootout game that night. We go to the finals. For, first of all, let's do the consolation game. Miller City defeated Corey 68-51. Those same three guys were hot again. Noah Otto, 24 points. He had a total of nine threes in the weekend. Kuhlman had 22 again that night. Gable had 13, so 59 points out of their big three. And Miller City defeats Corey 68-51 the consolation game. The championship game, a complete opposite, a defensive struggle. Uh, Bluffton defeated Arlington 36-23. Caleb Jefferson with 16. Ivan Berry for, with 15. How about Bluffton? Since Denneker goes out with a knee injury, your point guard, probably your best overall player, blows an ACL. Bluffton's 3-2 and two since then. Wow, good for them. Hey, let's look at the Coldwater Asset Allocation Holiday Classic. In the semis, Coldwater 53, Marion Local 49. Tyler Mesher from Marion Local had 20 points. In the other semi, St. Henry got on Salina 67 to 34. So then we go to the consolation game. Marion Local has 49. Mesher has 21 again. He had a great weekend, 41 points. Salina, 31. Salina only averaged 32.5 points per game in the tournament. Not a great offensive weekend for them. In the championship game, St. Henry, 62. Coldwater 49 for Coldwater. Cole Frilling had 25 points in two games, but the tournament MVP Tyler Schlarman from St. Mary's had 44 points in two games, including 30 in the final. I had a chance to see Tyler Schlarman play against Duffer Jefferson. That young man can play. He's going to be a fast factor in, yeah. um, in the conference this year in the MAC conference. Let's go to the Parkway tournament. That would be the Chat Insurance tournament played over there. First game, Graham defeated Grove City Christian. Second game, Big shootout game for Ridgemont. They had 88, or they had 88, but Parkwood did against Ridgemont's 50. Jaden Streets had half of Ridgemont's 50 points. He had 25. But Matt Mason Baxter with 27. Caleb Kinney with 25. Corey Wall with 13. That's 65 of the 88 points for Parkway by those three guys. We go to the consolation game. Uh, Ridgemont falls to 0 10. Grove City Christian defeated them 63 53. The championship game, it was all Graham 51 33. Over Parkway, Matt Goddard had 19, Tyler Powell had 15. Matt Goddard, 19 points, 9 rebounds, 5 steals, 5 blocks. That's a pretty good night. That's a good night. That's, That's a, a good pretty game. good night. Graham wins the tournament. Hey, let's look at the border battle. Four schools that border each other this year played at Waynesfield. In the first semi, USV 52, Allen East 40. That was 24-24 at halftime. USV's Quinn Snyder had 19 points. Brady Hipsher had 18 points for Allen East. Devin Reed, 16. In the second semifinal, Waynesfield 62, Ada 56. Ada was up two at half, so Waynesfield got on them in the second half. Waynesfield Goshen had four players in double figures. For Ada, Seth Conley, that's a familiar name out of football season, had 17 points. So we go to the consolation game, and Allen East beat Ada 52 47. Again, Devin Reed had 15. Brady Harris had 16 for Allen East. Harris had four threes in that game as well. For Ada, Cade Mullins had 16 points. In the championship game, USV 52, Waynesfield Goshen 31. Jaden Maxwell had 15, including three threes for Waynesfield Goshen. For USV, Wayne Lowry had 15 with two threes. Wyatt Daniels had 15 with three threes. USV the champion. You know, we're kind of unfortunate. We had USV on against Collide a little bit earlier in the year, and it was not a good game. One of those Christmas games where they just couldn't get started. USV's got things rolling, except yeah. for that little snub we had against Collider that we had on the air one night. Well, let's look at some of our other big right. games we've That's got through right. the tournament. So let's look at big games. How about Delphi St. John 77, Ottoville 73 in overtime for the two rivalries. In the first game, Ottoville's down 15 in the third quarter. Freshman Josh Turbin comes up with 14 points in the fourth quarter, including four three-point field goals. We tied up at 65. We go to overtime. In the overtime, uh, Delphi St. John starts out really well. They're up about 12, but Seaver hits a three. Turbin hits a two-point two basket. Mormon hits a three. It's close. But Colin Will and Jared Wurst make free throws down at the end, and DSJ wins 77-73. 
Worst also had 15 in a loss that went against Crestview. And Dolphin St. John's goes to 5 and 3. Ottoville, they're 10 and 2 after wins over Crestview and Lincoln View and Macomb on Monday night. Got a lot of good things going on at Ottoville right now. Hey, let's look at Elida. They're 9 and 0 right now. They had two big on the road wins. First one against Ottoville. They win 66 61. That was two undefeated teams at the time. Then they went to Lima Senior and they get away with a one point victory 55 54. It was very close the whole game. Two point difference at the end of the first quarter. One point. Uh, difference in each of the third, four, uh, second, third, and fourth quarters for senior high. Jaleel King, 24 points, including 15 in the fourth quarter. He had 17 rebounds. That's unbelievable. But they had free throw troubles. The Spartans missed 16 free throws on the evening. For Elida, Isaac McAdams, 22 points. He had 11 in the fourth quarter. Dante Johnson, 16 points, 10 rebounds. And Daniel Unruh, the leading scorer, had 14 points and seven rebounds for another solid game for him. Those are a couple of big wins on the road for the Bulldogs. And, and Denny Thompson likes to go out and play good teams. I mean, mm -hmm. if they pick Ottaville up, he's got a good season going right now. They always play Lyman Senior. We got the tip off classic in the beginning. They're always looking for ways to upgrade their schedule. They play good teams yeah. when you're out of the light. They're on a roll. Now with a 9 0 record heading into Western Buckeye League play this week. Well, Minster had a good time over Christmas as well. They're up to 4 and 1 now. They had a win over Rushi, 57-42. Kettner with 13. Jared Schultz with 13. Isaac Schmeezing with 14. They had five threes between the three of them. Then they go to Houston, or actually have Houston at home, and defeat Houston, 80-44. Once again, the same three. Kettner with 11. Schultz with 14. Schmeezing with 17. Joined by Frerichs. He had 11. Frerichs also had nine against Rushi. Those guys kind of being the, the scoring leaders for Minster. They're up to four and one heading into MAC play this week, and after a long football season, they got to go into Mister Basketball they too. They turn it around quick, didn't they? Hey, let's take a look at the Shawnee Indians. Seven and two. They beat Marion Local 57-52. They beat Delph uh, Delphus Jefferson 66-34. Sheridan O'Neill had 17 points. Big guy stepped out and hit a couple of threes. Johnny Caprella 15 points. Then they played LCC and got away with a four-point win, 59-55. Shawnee was uh, led at half, 27-19, so a good comeback in the second half by the T-Birds. Caprella, again, 22 points, had three threes. O'Neal, 12 points and six blocks. Those two guys are leading them. That Shawnee team, pretty pesky on defense, yeah. causing lots of turnovers. They're pretty good. And when they get to those turns, they get out in transition. And they're doing this without Tyler Moore, who's out with That's that right. thigh injury he's had. Now he's only played in a couple games. Sure would like to see him get back before the Western Buckeye League season gets going for the Indians. Well, let's go to Versailles. They've taken their mark to 8-0. They're 2-0 in MAC play. We're looking at some highlights right here from their game against Anna. That's, that's the second game they played over the Christmas break. First of all, defeated Tippy Canoe 77-63, and then defeated Anna 67-65. Watch Arns right here. The score is tied, as you can see. He says, I got this. Steps inside the three-point lane. Bang, his team wins 67-65. And then they defeated Miami East 68-37. Versailles averaging 63.4 points on the season, giving up just 46.5. They've got Parkway Friday at Franklin Monroe Saturday. And if you want to look ahead to big games, they have undefeated Fort Laramie on Tuesday the 9th. And then Friday night, uh, Laramie has uh, Rushi before they get to that game, who's 7-3, so that could change for Fort Laramie. But what could be a huge game in that area, Versailles undefeated, Fort Laramie undefeated. That will be next Tuesday night if both teams continue to win. That'll be a fun one. Well, we've already talked about some guys that had great games over the holidays. we got a few more stat stuffers for you. Jamal Whiteside from Perry, 20 points against Shawnee, 21 versus Bath, and 15 versus Wapak. That's a pretty good three-game run for Jamal. Tabor's looking forward to somebody who can just kind of take over games mm -hmm. for him, and Whiteside's become the guy here lately doing that for them. He's playing very, very well for just Jamal Whiteside. For Temple Christian, you've heard these names before, mm -hmm. Noel Howell and Brody Bowman. Howell, he's got 13 against New Knoxville, 25 against Fort Jennings, 30 against Ben Logan. Add that all in the Ben Logan game, he had eight threes. Eight threes in that game. Wow. Add them all together, he had, uh, what, 14 threes over those three games. Brody Bowman, he's got 15 against New Knoxville. Uh, he also had 24, 28 against Fort Jennings, 24 against Ben Logan. He's on a roll right now. Those two guys carrying the Pioneers into NWCC play. Well, when you talk about the Bath Wildcats, you're used to hearing about Chad Fry yeah. scoring a lot of points. He's getting a little help right now. Will Clark had 21 points and five threes against Liberty Benton in a big 58-39 win. They need some scoring help to help Fry along. 
Well, it's time for the bright spot, it is. and you've got a couple of good ones coming up. Well, it's a bright spot for us who like high school basketball. It's not a bright spot if you're a WBL team <laughs> who's not named Wapak and not named uh, Ottawa Glendorf. Let's yeah. look at two guys who've had some serious injuries and are now back on the court. First of all, for Ottawa Glendorf, Jay Kaufman had an ACL surgery in June, sometime yeah. over the summer. summer. Okay, he comes back against Bowling Green on the 19th, had seven points, made a three. On the 23rd against Archibald, he had 17, made a three-point basket that night. They needed all of them. They beat Archibald 70-65. Then against Perrysburg, he had 24, including four from the three-point line. They defeated Perrysburg 58-50, so just another addition to a team that was already undefeated. OG at Bath on Friday, at Bluffton on Saturday, 8-0 and 1-0 in the Western Buckeye League. And then an injury we, we talked to some guys about during football season. Jace Copeland could have lost a leg thanks to some good doctors and some recovery time and so on. He's back playing again after that lower leg injury. He had six points against Perry, made a couple three-point field goals, and good to see him back. He also played against Jefferson, a couple wins there, and they're 6-2, and 1-0 oh, with the Wapakoneta Redskins, and they have Shawnee and at Liberty Benton this weekend. And those two guys are great leaders that will really help their respective teams. Yeah, unless you're the other eight teams in the conference, you're happy to see guys like that back on the playing floor. Hey, Friday night, Mark and I get to go to Defiance. And you know, if you've stayed uh, in touch, they have built a new high school and middle school right behind their existing high school. Here are some shots of their gymnasium, which we will help open up. It's going to be a boys-girls doubleheader against Kenton. We're going to do both games, so tune in and watch the replays. But it's going to be pretty cool. It's a beautiful gymnasium with a big video board. It's a bowl with a walkway across the top, similar to Bowling Green's uh, Stroh Center, if you've been there, and some of the other gymnasiums in the area. We are really looking forward to going up there and helping them christen. There's the last picture of the old gymnasium. Everything now after the first of the year will happen in the new gymnasium. And we're excited to be part of the initial night of high school basketball and Defiance High School's new gymnasium. That'll be a lot of fun. Well, a couple things about that, Mark. First of all, we'd like to get Jerry Beauty on. We think we've made some contacts with Jerry to talk about how they decided to plan this facility and organize it and define where the seating goes and how, what, how they come up with a structure as there as we talked about and how they come up with this. But we also, we got a couple good basketball games. Kenton's 5-0, 1-0 and and in the uh, Western Buckeye League. Defiance is 4-3, and 0-1, and and that's on the boys' side. The girls' side has a great game coming up. Defiance is 7-1. They're 2-0 in the Western Buckeye League. And Kenton is 6-2, 1-1. So we got not just an opening of the facility yep. and all the fun that will go with that and the ceremony and so on, but also a couple good basketball games on Friday night. You're seeing some pictures of the rest of the facility. They put turf on the football field and redid baseball fields. It's just a gorgeous overall school and athletic facilities, and we're looking forward to going up there. All right, that's segment one. We'll be right back in a minute with Plays of the Week. Hey, there we are over by the big screen. It's time for Plays of the Week, and Mark's going to start with a play out of the Lincoln View game. Hey, remember us old-timers? Remember the A-team? Gee, I love it when a plan comes together. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Well, I like it when a plan comes together. We've got a set play right here. This is Lincoln View in Columbus Grove, and we're going to roll the tape and watch this set play right here by Lincoln View. Here we come. Here comes the screen. We slip the screen and go to the basket, and we catch and score. That pass came from uh, Caden Ringwald, and Ethan Kemmler finished it. If you watch the play again, as you see it here, here comes the guy off the screen. He makes the catch. We've cleared out the backside. Here comes the screen right here. When two defenders jump to the screen, he goes to the basket. A great read there by Caden Ringwall to find the correct guy open. Love it when a plan comes together. This one right here, this is a, a nice job of overplay defense by Marion Local. Salina is in the green, and they're out running their five on the perimeter offense. The rule book says when you hit the perimeter and you get to the arc and nobody's guarding, you go back door. A little bit of confusion and watch the steal right here by Tangerman. Nick's going to go the length of the floor and finish with the two-handed flush and gets away with hanging on the rim as well. But the <laughs> idea is to overplay on the perimeter and not give up that back door cut at the same time. But you can see the Salina guys. They've got five on the perimeter. Watch the cut right here. Okay, I'm on the arc, and I can't get the ball, so I go back cut right there. Here comes another one right here. But the third one doesn't occur in Tangeman with a nice overplay. And then finally the back door cut a little out of sync, and 
There's our steel right there, and Tangman's going to go the length of the floor and get the dunk out of it. And Marion Local playing very well defensively through a thing that's kind of difficult to do. Then we're back to the same game that we had earlier. This is Columbus Grove and Lincoln View again. Watch this move to the basket. Spin move, up and under through three guys, off, kiss it off the glass. There's a nice move made by, uh, uh, that was a ring wall right there again. And then watch this behind the back layup. How about that play right there? That's by Marion like Local. Shot. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's Colin Everman. Watch him take it in transition. Split the defense behind the back, reverse layup and score. That's just a pretty play right there for him. And a nice move in transition for those guys. And then we're back. This is St. Henry. Watch the hustle play. Tip it in bounds. The three-point field goal by, uh, to Marcus Bruns. Albers tipped it back in bounds. How many times, Mark, do we give, you know, our, our Stolle Hustle Award winner during a game and we give it to the guy who, you know, he makes a lot of shots, he scores a lot of points, but here in this situation, mm -hmm. this is the type of play we reward with Stolle Hustle Award winner. Tips the ball back in, flying out of bounds, his teammate gets a three out of it, and that's one of the reasons Mary Local's on a roll right now. You know, right there you saw it, and sometime in the background of our cameras, you'll see the coaches and the, and the yeah. guys on the bench. The coaches get really excited about plays like that. The fans, not so much. They'd rather cheer for a three, but that's the kind of stuff that excites coaches, it's right? Things, Cause it's things that wins games, little things like that. Yeah. That's what win games. Yeah. All right. Good job on the big board. As always, yeah. we'll be right back with our final segment on a closer look. All right, welcome back for the final segment of A Closer Look with Mark and Mark. And Mark Shine, this week, your College Player of the Week is? Well, we're going to go in a little bit different direction. We got some information from Indiana, or Youngstown State University, my fault, Youngstown State University, about a young lady who's got Lima ties, and we thought we'd switch, shift gears a little bit and go and speak about her. This is India Benjamin, a Lima senior graduate. She has a school record 1,618 points and a school record 618 assists while at Lima Senior. Her senior year, she was an All-Ohio player, first team, Northwest District Player of the Year, Track Player of the Year. Her team went 20 and 5, and not only did she do that in high school, but she also was on a track team and a member of the National Honor Society. She goes off to Youngstown State University, where she's all-freshman team on the Horizon League. Her freshman year, her sophomore and junior year, she led the Horizon League in assists. This year, Youngstown State 5-8, and eight. they're 1-1 one one in conference play. India Benjamin averaging 9.4 points per game. She has 56 assists, 36 rebounds, and 16 made three-point field goals. And what did we get from Youngstown State University this week? Well, she is the only lady in the country playing college basketball who in her career has 170 three-point field goals made. She actually has 174, over 1,000 points. She's at 1,094. She has exactly 300 rebounds and 509 assists. According to the uh, Youngstown State people, she's the only person in the country, female player with over 170 made threes, 1,000 points, 300 rebounds, and 500 assists. And why did we do this? Well, we wanted to feature India Benjamin, of course, but this weekend, uh, Youngstown State plays the University of Illinois Chicago, and they play Indiana University slash Purdue University slash Indianapolis. So I get to say that Youngstown State plays Uwe Pui this weekend. <laughs> well, she was a great high school oh, player, goodness. but some, yes, of those, she was. some of those players just blossom in college, and she really has. And she's majoring in nursing. She'll graduate on time. National Honor Society wow. in high school. She's got it all wired together as India Benjamin. Good for her. Hey, let's look at some of the great games we got coming your way this week. I get to start off. Shawnee's at 7-2, 1-0 in the WBL. They go to Wapak, who is 6-2, 1-0. Shawnee's getting scoring from Johnny Caprella and Sheridan O'Neill. They are on a six-game win streak. Wapak, their last game out, beat Jefferson 64-52. Adam Good had 22 points. Adam Scott had 12 points. This is going to be a very important game early on in the WBL because both these teams could be contenders. Let's move into a big game in the Blanchard Valley Conference this week, and that will be Arlington at Pandora Gilboa. Arlington comes in at 2-1 in conference play. PG is 3-0. Arlington averages 48.3 points a game, but they give up 46.6. Ivan Berry, leading player so far this year for Arlington, he averages 13.9 points per game, shoots 53% from the field, 8.6 rebounds, and 2.5 blocks, also in double figures, is Jarrett Vermillion. And leading the BBC in assists right now is Jacob Russell from Arlington. He averages five assists per game. Pandora Gilboa, they're 3-0 in conference play with easy wins over McComb, Riverdale, and Hopewell Loudon. They do have a loss this season. They're, they are currently 7-1. That was the USV by three. 
Drew Johnson, they're all everything guy, averaging 18.6 points per game, shooting 55.6% from the field. They have five different players on Pandora Gaboa's team shooting 48% from the floor or better. Grant Murphy and Johnson, they are uh, first and second in the conference in three-point field goal for shooting. McCullough is ninth. Cooper McCullough also has 21 assists and only five turnovers. That's the best assist to turnover ratio in the conference. And as we start BV play in this BVC play in 2018, can anybody catch PG? Well, it's Arlington's turn to try this weekend. They're pretty good. Hey, let's go to the MAC. Fort Recovery, 5-2, 0-1 in the league. St. Henry, 6-2, 0-1 in the league. Neither of these teams want to get that second loss right off the beginning. Fort Recovery on December 23rd beat Ansonia, 65-43. They really get shared scoring. Nobody really steps up and leads them in scoring every single time. St. Henry, as we talked about earlier, won the Coldwater Tournament. Tyler Schlarman was the MVP. He is the go-to guy for St. Henry, and they need to stop him if they are to beat them. Let's move to the NWCC, and that would be Elgin at Perry. You say, well, I don't know much about Elgin. Well, the reason is, of course, they're kind of over in that Marion area and out of our coverage area a little bit. But Marion and Coach Bill Clem, they're 7-1 and one on the season. They started out with a seven-game winning streak before having a seven-point loss to Marion Pleasant. They are 2-0 and oh in conference play. Uh, they have defeated Ridgemont and Lehman by three. They average 56.5 points per game, and they give up just under 41 points per game. They've been very solid defensively. In those seven wins, nobody has scored more than 44 points against them. They did give up 51 to Pleasant. That's a season high defensively for them. Temple Christian uh, has a two-point win over Perry. That was in overtime. Then Perry defeated Waynesfield. So they're one and one in conference play, averaging 59 points a game and giving up 55. Perry just came off that triumvirate of WBL games. Bass, Shawnee, and Wapakoneta played everybody played tough. Well, yeah. yeah, they were one and two and never played everybody tough through that area. If you're a negative for Perry, you've not played since December 27th. That's because their Continental game on the 30th was postponed because of weather and road conditions. Jamal Whiteside, you featured earlier, 20.3 points per game in the last four games. Logan Dre is 12.8 in the last four games, including 13 threes. Jackson's averaging 10 points a game. Over the last four games, talking about Ada, Shawnee, Bath, and Wapak, Perry's putting 63 and a half points on a board on the game. So it'll be Perry's offense against Elgin's defense this week in the NWCC. Let's go to the PCL for a Saturday night matchup. Pandora Gilboa, 7-1, 2-0 in the league at Miller City, 5-4, 1-0 in the league. So somebody's going to get their first league loss. PG beat Lipsick last time out. Mark talked about that six foot six inch Drew Johnson's as good a player as there is in the area. Also getting lots of help with the scoring from Jared Brees and Cooper McCullough. Miller City, they beat Corey Ross in 68-51, and they have three guys that seem to take turns leading them in scoring. Noah Otto, Mark Kuhlman, Mitch Cable. You've heard those names before, and you'll hear them again. On Sunday, the annual matchup that's played early in January on a Sunday, Dolphus St. John's at 5-3, and, and they're playing uh, they are one and one in MAC play, and they play at Lima Central Catholic, uh, who is four and five right now. We talked about DSJ a little bit. They have Minster at home. Minster, of course, is four and one. Have not played a conference game yet. DSJ averaging 51.3 points per game, giving up 48.4. If you leave out that 73, they give up an overtime to Ottaville. Uh, they are averaging got just 44.9 points per game defensively. They held a very good Versailles team to 48 points. We've talked about their names earlier in the show. Worst, Will, Kakuza, Houlihan. They are the people getting things done offensively. LCC has lost two close games in overtime. They collide a 40-38 and a four-point loss to Shawnee. They've lost four out of five, but they've been all close games. They need to get Mark Janowski going again. If you remember, Mark was averaging 16 points per game through the first four games. He missed a game with illness. And since that time he's came back, he's averaging only five and a half points a game. In their last three, they need to get him going in his absence. Sakela has had 12 points a game and three three three-point field goals per game in the last four. The home team always seems to win this game with between St. John's and LCC. This year it's at LCC. We'll see if that holds out this year as well. Let's put up our broadcast schedule now and see the other games that we're carrying here on WTLW and WOSN. Very cold out there. If you're not going to go to the gym, or even if you do go to the gym, turn us on afterwards. There you can see we're getting some WBL action, that Kenton Defiance double header that Mark and I talked about a little earlier with the boys and the girls playing up there. WBL gets in, uh, in serious uh, play here. You can see some of the other games that are going on. Look at the third one down. Mansfield Senior against Lima Senior. That's a Saturday night game. Mark and I is doing that. And Mike Shep returns to the mic 
to do that game. He's called many Mansfield senior, the T.Y. Tigers yep. against the Spartans. And that'll be a lot of fun, Mark, having Mike on oh, It'll be us. great to have Mike with us. But not only we talk about him having Mike back, that's a good basketball game. It's been very competitive between the two schools over the years. The Spartans have won the last four. But this Mansfield senior team is 6-1. and one. They're on a six-game winning streak. They lost their season opener to Mansfield St. Pete. They're 4-0 in Ohio Cap Cardinal Conference play. Neither team plays on Friday. So we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I'm ready because I'm tired on Friday trying to get going mm -hmm. on Saturday. We don't have that going on. So yeah. that should be a good basketball game at Lima Senior on Saturday night. We'll be glad to be a, be a part of it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We hope you join us. We thank you for joining us today on A Closer Look, and we'll see you next week.